Hi, and welcome to Mrs. PM Reads. Today we are continuing in our story, The Help by Katherine Stockett. We are continuing in chapter two. This is our third video of chapter two. We will wrap it up this time. And I've changed seats to get a little better lighting for you. In the last video, uh, Miss Lepo gave May Mobley, hello sweetheart, <laughs> this is my cat Cora, <laughs> uh, a good whack on the back of the legs for bothering her while she was on the phone. And we also found out that Miss Hilly has been telling people in the neighborhood that Minnie stole her candelabra. And we also heard a little bit of reference to a pie, <laughs> but we don't know what's going on unless you've seen the movie or already read the book, <laughs> but I'm not giving it away. All right, so, oh yes, they were talking about the power of Abilene's prayers. But Bertrina, Minnie get to laughing, you know, Coco, the one Clyde run off with, you know, I never forget her. Week after Clyde left you, I heard that Coco wake up to her coochie spoiled like a rotten oyster. Didn't get better for three months. Bertrina, she good friends with Coco. She know your prayers work. My mouth drop open. Why she never tell me this before? You saying people think I got the black magic? I knew it make you worry if I told you. They just think you got a better connection than most. We all on a party line to God, but you, you setting right in his ear. My teapot start fussing on the stove, bringing me back to real life. La, I just reckon I go ahead and put Miss Skeeter on the list, but how come I don't know? Which reminds me of what I don't want to think about that Miss Leifold's building me a bathroom because she think I'm diseased. And Miss Skeeter asking, don't I want to change things? Like changing Jackson, Mississippi, gone be like changing a light bulb. I'm stringing beans in Miss Leifold's kitchen and the phone rings. I'm hoping it's Minnie to say she found something. I done called everybody I ever waited on, and they all told me the same thing. We ain't hiring. But what they really mean is, we ain't hiring Minnie. Even though Minnie already had her last day of work three days ago, Miss Walter called Minnie in secret last night. Ask her to come in today because the house feel too empty, what with most of the furniture already taken away by Miss Hilly. I still don't know what happened with Minnie and Miss Hilly. I reckon I really don't want to know. Lee Folt residence, um, hi, this is, the lady stop, clear her throat. Hello, may I, May I please speak to Elizabeth Leifolt? Miss Leifolt ain't home right now. May I take a message? Oh, she say, like she got all excited over nothing. May I ask who's calling? This is Celia Foote. My husband gave me this number here, and I don't know Elizabeth, but, well... He said she knows all about the Children's Benefit and the Ladies' League. I know this name, but I can't quite place it. This woman talked like she from so deep in the country, she got corn growing in her shoes. Her voice is sweet, though. High pitch. 
Still, she don't sound like the ladies round here do. I give her your message, I say. What's your number? I'm kind of new here, and, well, that's not true. I've been here a pretty good stretch, gosh, over a year now. I just don't really know anybody. I don't get out too much. She clear her throat again, and I'm wondering why she's telling me all this. I'm the maid. She ain't gone win no friends talking to me. I was thinking maybe I could help out with the children's benefit from home, she say. I remember then who she is. She the one Miss Hilly and Miss Leifold always talking trash on because she marry Miss Hilly's old boyfriend. I give her the message. What you say your number is again? Oh, but I'm fixing to scoot off to the grocery store. Oh, maybe I should sit and wait. She don't reach you. She leave a message with your help. <clears throat> I don't have any help. In fact, I was planning on asking her about that, too, if she could pass along the name of somebody good. You looking for help? I'm in a stitch trying to find somebody to come all the way out to Madison County. Well, what do you know? I know somebody real good. She known for her cooking, and she look after you kids, too. She even got her own car to drive out to your house. Oh, well, I'd still like to talk to Elizabeth about it. Did I already tell you my number? No, ma'am, I sigh. Go ahead. Miss Leifolt never gone recommend Minnie. Not with all of Miss Hilly's lies. She say, it's Mrs. Johnny Foot, and it's Emerson to 6609. Just in case, I say. And her name is Minnie. She at Lakewood 84432. You got that? Baby girl, tug on my dress. Say, tum my hurt. And she rubbing her belly. I get an idea. I say, hold on. What's that, Miss Lee Fault? Uh-huh. I tell her. I put the phone back to my mouth and say, Miss Celia, Miss Leifold just walk in. And she say, she ain't feeling good, but for you to go on and call Minnie. She say she call you if she be needing help with the benefit. Oh, tell her I said thank you. And I sure do hope she gets to feeling better. And to call me up anytime. That's Minnie Jackson at Lakewood, 84432. Hang on, what's that? I get a cookie and give it to Mae Mobley. Feel nothing but delight at the devil in me. I am lying and I don't even care. I tell Miss Celia Foote, she say don't tell nobody about her tip on Minnie because all her friends want to hire her and they be real upset if they find out she give her to somebody else. <laughs> I won't tell her secret if she won't tell mine. I don't want my husband to know I'm hiring a maid. Well, if that ain't perfect, then I don't know what is. Soon as we hang up, I dial Minnie quick as I can. But just as I do, Miss Leifel walk in the door. This a real predicament, see. I gave this Miss Celia woman Minnie's number at home, but Minnie working today cause Miss Walter lonely. So when she call, Leroy gone give her Miss Walter number cause he a fool. <laughs> and if Miss Walter answer the phone when Miss Celia call, then the whole jig is up. Miss Walter gone tell this woman everything Miss Hilly been spreading around. I got to get to Minnie, or Leroy, before all this happen. Miss Leifold head back to her bedroom and, just like I figured, the first thing she do is tie up the phone. First, she call Miss Hilly. Then she call the hairdresser. Then she call the store about a wedding present 
talking, talking, talking. Soon as she hang up, she come out and ask what they having for supper this week. I pull out the notebook and go down the list. No, she don't want pork chops. She trying to get her husband to reduce. She wants skillet steak and green salad. And how many calories do I expect them meringue thingies have? And don't give no more cookies to Mae Mobley because she too fat. And, and, and. Law, for a woman who ain't said nothing to me but do this and use that bathroom, all of a sudden, she talking to me like I'm her best friend. Mae Mobley dancing a hot foot jig trying to get her mama to notice her. And just when Miss Leafolt about to bend down to pay her some attention, whoops, Miss Leafolt run out the door because she forgot. She got an errand to run and a blooming hour done past already. I can't make my fingers go through that dial fast enough. Minnie, I got a job lined up, but you got to get to the phone. She already called. Minnie's voice is flat. Leroy, give her the number. So, Miss Walter, answer it, I say. Deaf as doo-doo, and all of a sudden, it's like a miracle from God. She hear the phone ringing. I'm going in and out of the kitchen, not paying attention, but at the end, I hear my name. Then Leroy call, and I know that's what it was. Minnie sound wore out, and she the kind that don't ever get tired. Well... Maybe Miss Walter didn't tell her them lies Miss Hilly started. You never know. But even I ain't fool enough to believe that. Even if she didn't, Miss Walters know all about how I got back at Miss Hilly. <laughs> you don't know about the terrible, awful thing I did. I don't ever want you to know. I'm sure Miss Walters tell this woman I'm nothing short of the devil himself. Her voice sound eerie. She like she a record player going too slow. I'm sorry. I wish I could have called you earlier so you could pick up that phone. You done what you can. Nothing nobody can do for me now. I be praying for you. Thank you, she say, and then her voice break down, and I thank you for trying to help me. We hang up, and I go to mopping. The sound of Millie's voice, Minnie's voice, scare me. She always been a strong woman, always fighting. After Trelor died, she carries supper over to me every night for three months straight, and every day she say, nah -uh. You ain't leaving me on this sorry earth without you. But I tell you, I was sure enough thinking about it. I already had the rope tied when Minnie found it. The coil was tree lures from back when he doing a science project with pulleys and rings. I don't know if I's gone use it, knowing it's a sin against God. But I wasn't in my right mind. Minnie, though, she don't ask no questions about it. Just pull it out from under the bed, put it in the can, take it to the street. When she come back in, she brush her hands together like she cleaning things up as usual. She all business, that Minnie. But now, she sound bad. I got a mind to check under her bed tonight. I put down the bucket a sunshine cleaner them ladies is always smiling about on the TV. I got to set down. May Mobley come up holding her tummy, say, make it not hurt. She lay her face on my leg. I smooth her hair down over and over till she practically purring, feeling the love in my hand. And I think about all my friends, what they done for me what they do every day for the white women they waiting on. That pain in Minnie's voice. Tree lore, dead in the ground. I look down at baby girl who I know, deep down, I can't keep from turning out like her mama. And all of it together roll on top of me. 
I close my eyes, say the Lord's Prayer to myself, but it don't make me feel any better. Law help me, but something's gonna have to be done. Baby girl hung on my legs all afternoon to where I bout fall over a few times. I don't mind. Miss Leifold ain't said nothing to me or May Mobley since this morning. Been working so busy on that sewing machine in her bedroom, trying to cover up something else she don't like the look of in the house. After a while, me and May Mobley go into the regular living room. I got a load of Mr. Lee Folt's shirts to iron, and after this, I'm on get a pot roast going. I cleaned the bathrooms already, got the sheets changed, the rugs vacuumed. I always try to finish up early so me and baby girl can set together and play. Miss Lee Folt come in and watch me ironing. She do that sometimes, frown and look. Then she smile real quick when I glance up. Pat up the back of her hair, trying to make it puffy. Abilene, I have a surprise for you. She's smiling big now. She don't have no teeth showing, just a lip smile. Kind you got to watch. Mr. Leifold and I have decided to build you your very own bathroom. She clapped her hands together, drop her chin at me. It's right out there in the garage. Yes, ma'am. Where she think I've been all this time? So from now on, instead of using the guest bathroom, you can use your own right out there. Won't that be nice? Yes, ma'am. I keep ironing. TV's on and my program's fixing to start. She keeps standing there looking at me though. So you'll use that one out in the garage now? You understand. I don't look at her. I'm not trying to make no trouble, but she done made her point. Don't you want to get some tissue and go on out there and use it? Miss Leifold, I don't really have to go right this second. May Mobley point at me from the playpen, say, May Mo Juice? I get you some juice, baby, I say. Oh, Miss Leifold lick her lips a few times, but when you do, you'll go on back there and use that one now. I mean, only that one, right? Miss Leifold wear a lot of makeup, creamy looking stuff, thick. That yellowish makeup's spread across her lips, too, so you can barely tell she's even got a mouth. I say what I know she want to hear. I use my colored bathroom from now on, and then I go on and Clorox the white bathroom again, real good. Well, there's no hurry. Any time today would be fine. By the way she's standing there fiddling with her wedding ring, she really mean for me to do it right now. I put the iron down real slow, feel that bitter seed grow in my chest, the one planted after tree lore died. My face goes hot, my tongue twitchy. I don't know what to say to her. All I know is I ain't saying it. And I know she ain't saying what she want a say either. And it's a strange thing happening here because nobody saying nothing and we still managing to have us a conversation. <laughs> All right, and that is the end, yay, of chapter two. <laughs> oh, chapter three is gonna be from Minnie's version. Maybe we'll find out about that pie. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you for joining me for Mrs. Pam Reads. And I need to remind you, please, to subscribe to the channel. And when you do, you'll want to kick, kick, click that little bell tab. And that will allow you to receive a notice every time a new video posts. Thank you so much for joining me for Mrs. Pam Reads. And I will see you next time.